Are you looking to sell more books? Have you been thinking about running book ads but have no clue where to start? Well, you're in luck because we're about to start the next Saturday series all about running ads to books. And today, we're going to cover how to run Amazon ads. So stick around. Hey, Right Writers, Keith Wheeler here, and if you want to continue to get all the hints, tips, and tricks on how to make self-publishing easier, then be sure to subscribe to the channel, smash your little bell icon so you get alerted each and every time I put out a new video. A while back, I did an entire series on running AMS ads. While most of the data within that series is still very relevant, I wanted to start this Sell More Book series with an updated intro to Amazon ads, since there are a few things that have changed within the system. Now, I wanted to start the Sell More Book series with Amazon ads for three main reasons. Number one, they're super simple to create a campaign. Number two, you can start a campaign dirt cheap, as little as $1 budget a day. Number three, the audience is what we call a warm audience, which means they're already on Amazon to buy. Now, one thing that should be noted is that since nothing is really guaranteed when it comes to running ads, you should never budget money that you can't afford to lose. Also, as you probably know, KDP pays you 60 days out from the date of sale, whereas Amazon ads will take their money out for your ad on their very next billing cycle. So keep that in mind as well. Okay, enough of this disclaimer crap, let's get started. First, we're gonna head on over to advertising.amazon.com. If you don't already have an account, you're gonna log in, create an account. We're gonna go and create a new campaign. Now, this is one of the things that's different from the last video I did. Amazon is always changing their ads and, and coming up with new ways to help you sell books as well as help them make money. Because a lot of people think that Amazon's against you, but the truth is, is when you sell books, they make money as well. So they want you to sell books. So there's two different types that they have available, your sponsored products and your lock screen ads. I'm not going to cover lock screen ads too much in this video, but there's definitely a place for it depending on the niche that you're in and the book that you have. We're going to focus on the most common one, which is a sponsored product ad. I'm going to click continue. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come up with a name for your campaign. Now, what I usually will do is some variation of the book's name. So whether it's the name itself, whether it's an abbreviation. So if I'm going to do for my buddy knows letters, I might do my buddy knows letters, MBKL, and then underscore. And I always start off with what I call a research ad. And I do RS1. What a research ad is, it's just a terminology that I like to use. I actually learned it from a buddy of mine, Marco Motino who's really good with Amazon ads. When you're starting a brand new ad for the very first time, you don't know what's gonna work, what's not gonna work, It's you're researching it. So that's why I call it a research ad. You're gonna do, your start date is gonna start on today's date, and your end date is gonna be whenever you want to. If you don't put an end date, it's just gonna go until you pause it. You can change your start date to sometime in the future if you'd like. If you don't wanna start it right away, I'm gonna leave this as is. Your daily budget, you can start as little as $1 a day. Now, the biggest suggestion I have when it comes to this is never set a budget that you can't afford to lose because, again, there's no guarantees when it comes to advertising. I usually will start off with $5 a day. And typically, Amazon won't go anywhere near that, but sometimes they will. So you need to make sure that you can afford to lose that $5 a day. And the great thing is, is you can always pause the campaign whenever you want. Now you have two different ways of targeting. You can target automatically or you can target manually. Now when you do automatic targeting, and I know a lot of people have had really good success with this. Basically Amazon is picking the words that you're going to target. So if, if you really are researching and you have no clue what kind of words to go for, then you might want to start off with an automatic targeting and see what works from there. Manual targeting is where you choose the keywords or the products. This is almost always the ones that I use is manual targeting, the campaign bidding strategy, and you can read all of these under here, but basically it's gonna to default to uh, the lower your bid in real time when they don't need as much on your cost per click. There's that option, and then there's one where you'll allow them to go lower than your bid, or you'll allow them to go up to 100% higher than your bid on a cost per click basis. Again, this isn't your daily budget. This is your cost per click. 
which we're going to get to in a second. But basically, you're going to say, I'm going to allow for, let's say, 10 cents for this particular keyword on a cost per click. So if you select the bid up and down, then that means that if the bid comes in lower than that, they'll do that. But also if it goes up to 20 cents per click, because that's 100% more than my 10 cents per click in this example, then I'll allow them to do that as well. Or you can just set a fixed bid where you say 10 cents, that's it. No higher, no lower. I typically for my research ad, uh, depending on my budget, I will either do down only or I'll do up and down. Uh, especially if it's my first research ad and I have no clue what bids to go by, like what the, the key bid is, then I may select this bidding dynamic of up and down. But for now, we're just gonna do the dynamic bidding of down only. The ad format is gonna be either custom text or standard. Standard means there's not gonna be any text. It's just gonna be your book cover shown along with your title and your price. I almost always go with custom text. I just feel like adding additional words in there can just entice them even more. Um, so I will almost always do a custom text ad. Now we pick our products. The book I want to do is My Buddy Knows Letters. So I'm just going to click that. There it is over there. Now it's time to start working on my targeting. So you can either target by keyword or you can target by product. If you target by keyword, you're going to go in because we selected that we we're going to manually do it. They have some suggestions in here and you can add any suggestion that you want. Um, you can do broad, you can do phrase, or you can do exact. So for this particular one, for broad, if someone puts Keith Wheeler in, or Wheeler Keith, or the as long as it has the words Keith and Wheeler anywhere in there, then it's going to possibly bring up my ad phrase is where it has to be the phrase Keith Wheeler together. It could be anywhere in what they type out, but it's only going to show up if someone puts Keith Wheeler and then something else. So if they did Keith Wheeler books or books by Keith Wheeler, that would all work for phrase. Exact is where they only type in that particular keyword phrase. So if they only type in Keith Wheeler, that's the only time this ad will show up. So as you can see, they have suggested bids here and you can decide whether or not you want to add each of these keyword phrases through here. When you're done with that, you're going to go to enter list. And this is where you're going to enter in your keywords that you want to search for. You're allowed to have up to a thousand keywords. Amazon usually suggests a minimum of 200. I try to suggest at least for your first research ad to do as close to that 1000 as possible. And it may seem hard, I know, but it's definitely worth it because if you don't know what keywords your target audience might be searching for, try to get as many variations as possible. Now, here's the good thing about Amazon ads that is not true for KDP keywords. In Amazon ads, for your keyword targeting, you are allowed to use other author names, other book titles, and even other books ASINs or ISBN numbers. Now, how do you find your keyword list? You really do it the same way you do when you're doing keyword search for finding your keywords for your book for KDP. You're going to go into Amazon in incognito mode, go to the search bar, start typing one of your keywords in, see what pops up on the suggested list, and those are going to be some of your keywords. And then you're going to just keep doing that for all the different initial ideas that you have for your book. And then if you still don't have a long list, which you may not, then you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing, but then you're gonna put an A at the end and see what shows up, and then a B at the end and see what shows up. And those will all be your list. When you do a search for one of those keywords and something pops up in the dropdown, you click on that and you can look at some of those top 10, top 20 books. And those top 10, 20 books, the titles, the author names, and the ISBNs can all get put into your keywords list as well. Now, yes, that can be extremely time consuming, you know, it might take you a couple hours, but it, it will give you the list that you need. A way that I like to do it, which is a lot quicker, is I use Publisher Rocket. Publisher Rocket literally goes in programmatically and does that exact same thing, but instead of taking me two, three hours to do, it does it in, you know, a matter of seconds. So then I just, I can export the Excel spreadsheet, 
combine the list together and now I have one list that I can just put into the keyword targeting spot right here. Now once you add in your words, I'm going to throw some in here real quick. It'll give you some suggestions, add keywords, and it's going to ask me to give a bid amount. That's what Amazon's recommending. I never go with what Amazon recommends because let's be honest, Amazon wants to make more money. So I will go through and just set it, click save. I made it 10 cents and go through them. I typically to start with will not go more than 15 cents. Uh, you can always up it, you can always lower it, especially if you're doing the up and down dynamic, then you really don't have to worry about that too much. But again, you have to keep in mind that you want to get the most out of your $5 a day budget. So if you start doing bids at a dollar per click, then it's not going to take long before you get to that $5 budget. And again, remember, you're going to get charged this every time someone clicks on your ad, even if they don't buy it. So again, keep that in mind and you want to make sure that you bid on the side of caution. Now we have a negative keyword targeting and that's exactly what it sounds like. If anybody types in anything that you put in here, those searches will not show your book. So one of the negative keywords I like to put in here is the word free, F-R-E-E, -E, because I know that if someone's searching for something free, then they're probably not going to want to buy my book. Now, obviously you don't want to do that if your book is about like being gluten free or, you know, dye free fabric and that kind of stuff, obviously. But if your book is just a normal book and free is not relevant to it, then you definitely want to put free as a negative keyword again. So that way it weeds out those people that are searching for a free book. Now, the next thing I want to show you is product targeting and product targeting. As you can see, they have this default bid. They always want you to pay more. Again, I set that to 15 cents or less. You can pick your target. So this is the one that they're suggesting. Absolutely, so I'll target that. But then I can go to search and I can search other products. I can search by category. So you don't just have to do your products based on books. If you know people that would like your book also would like a certain toy, then you can target that particular type of toy. So this particular book is about letters. So I can do a search and let's say uh, flashcards. So I can do flashcards, I can target that. So when someone's searching for a flashcard and they're on a page and they're looking at a particular flashcard, they might see my ad. Uh, let's see what else I can search for. Uh, let's search alphabet. Okay, alphabet reference, kids alphabet skills, children's alphabet books. There we go. So again, this is product targeting. And this just shows you what you targeted, shows you what your prices are. Again, you can do negative product targeting. So if you know that there's particular products that you don't want your book shown next to, then you can definitely list those in here. Next up is our custom text. You're limited to only 150 characters. This is where you really want to get people to buy your book. When they click on it, it will bring them to your sales page. So in here, your custom text, you want it to be something that talks to them emotionally. Depending on your book, it could be a frustration that they're having. If it's a self-help, it could be something that they, that they want to work on. For this particular book, I could say something along the lines of tired of the same boring old alphabet book or perfect alphabet book for bored toddlers or something along those lines. Again, talking at the emotion that the kids are bored, people are stuck at home, they've got cabin fever, something along those lines. One more thing I want to note about this is that Amazon does not like it when you put a word in all caps. If you have a word or multiple words that are in all caps, they'll actually get rejected. And then when it gets rejected, you typically have to go in and recreate the whole thing from scratch. So I definitely suggest to err on the side of caution and just don't put all caps in here. Again, you have a 150 character limit and then you just click launch campaign and you'll receive an email that tells you that it's being looked at and you'll usually hear back, they say within 24 to 48 hours, I have found that 24 hours is usually the, the sweet spot and they'll either tell you that something's wrong with it or they will tell you that everything is hunky dory and it is now live. Now I know that was a lot of info and you probably are a bit overwhelmed, 
Don't worry, that's okay and it's perfectly normal. Just take it slow. As with all the ad platforms I'm gonna cover in this Sell More Books series, there's gonna be a lot of trial and error. What works for one author may not work for another. In fact, even within the same author, what works for one book may not work for another. So don't be afraid to experiment. And remember that you can always pause ads, keywords, products, if they're not being profitable enough for you. Now that you know how to run Amazon ads, you may be wondering how to understand the resulting data that you get. Don't worry, I've got you covered. Click on this video right here, and I'll show you how to read the numbers and what those numbers mean to help you sell more books. Or you can check out this video that YouTube has lined up and they think you'll love. I'll see you in the next video, and remember to write right.